Let's okay. go. One, two, three, plus me. Monkeys in the barrel. Don't send no more teeth. Rob my bros and pearls. Stomp like four, five feet. From the road to the narrow tribe. Look so OP, son. You wouldn't dare. Yeah. Like the rat pack blind when we does that. And it's tap, tap, swipe, cause the buzz back. And I'm flying, I'm a wipe. That's a must have. Baby, say that I'm a only type. You know we gon' start a holly smoke. Every single time, and if somebody try my brother, I think I'm a with 12 institutions nestled in the nation's most desirable destinations, you'll see us enjoying life at the peak of celebration. As you witness us not only win, but win the right way, you'll find us competing at the peak of integrity. As our more than 5,000 student athletes take the field of play with unequaled passion, you'll find us performing at the peak of competition. The Mountain West is at the peak.
I T Y. No another five letter word that means the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Let's go. One, two, three plus me. Monkeys in the barrel. Don't send no more teeth. Rob my bros and pearls. Stomp like four, five feet from the road in there. Tribe looks so old. Please, son, you wouldn't dare. Yeah. Like the rat pack live when we does that. And it's tap, tap, swipe, cause the buzz back. And I'm flying, I'm a white. the uh, Mandalay Bay Michelob Ultra. Kind of set for tonight's game and we'll get right into the game action. And Donovan, you know, UNLV coming off of a couple of losses on the road at SMU in San Francisco. And we're gonna have to be talking here about how they're gonna get things turned around but here are the starting lineups for UNLV. Bryce Hamilton will be back in the starting lineup for UNLV. Sort of a message sent by Kevin Kruger. And you know, a, a, a tough one at that. You know, sometimes you have to send those messages as, as coaches and it's, it's really a tough thing to do. But I'm so happy to see Bryce Hamilton back in the starting lineup. He's such a valuable uh, member of this team, you know, a leader on this team and, and uh, you know, just a great scorer. Um, and a great all-around player, so it's good to see him back in that lineup. McKay wants to get the scoring started for UNLV. This should be an up-tempo game as Victor Rykovic with the rebound. UNLV with Jordan McCabe, Justin Webster, Josh Baker, Bryce Hamilton, and Royce Ham Jr. in the lineup. 
They are playing quite a trio tonight as Hamill slashes to the bucket, lays it up and in, and that's Darian Trammell. Trammell averaging 13 points per game. The backcourt, the trio, 45 points per game they average. Donovan? Yeah, it's like a three-headed monster, and, and Trammell uh, you know, can lead that charge and uh, a quick jab step and attack to the basket, and he's at the rim. Rebels have to do much better at guarding the ball than that. Again, this time rings out for McCabe from distance. Two open shots. This is an up-tempo team, so it's Darian Trammell, Cameron Tyson, Riley Grigsby, those aforementioned three guards that we spoke of, Brandon Chatfield, and Victor Rykovich. And he's another, you know, um, a player that you have to look out for, and, and, and this team is very, very comfortable shooting the three. So, you know, Rebels you do not want them to get off to a good start from the three-point line. And so far, first two possessions, you know, they're not showing uh, that they're ready defensively. So they're going to have to pick that up and pick it up really, really quick. So Grigsby made that three, and the two-pointer by Trammell. It's a 5 to nothing lead, and this Seattle team is lethal. Popping out up top, we saw Darian Trammell defending McCabe, and now underneath, losing the handle and out of bounds was Royce Ham Jr., and good defensive pressure. If yeah. UNLV wants to get back to the 500 mark, Donovan, what do they have to do here tonight? You know, it, it, we, we talked about it a little bit. It starts with defense and establishing that culture of defense. And, you know, watching the Rebels early, uh, this is my first game commentating, but watching the Rebels early, they seem to have a lot of passion and a lot of flow defensively. And um, Riley Grigsby buries that three-pointer, and it's 8 to nothing, Seattle. Yeah, yeah. And, and Grigsby's had, he's had two wide-open threes, you know, back-to-back. -back. So, obviously, you need to get up on him and make him put the ball on the floor. His coach, Chris Victor, the associate head coach, and now the interim head coach. And we've got a moving screen, and that's going to go against Bryce Hamilton. But Chris Victor is the interim head coach, and he replaces Jim Hayford. Back in November, we saw where Hayford was, first of all, they suspended him for using racial slurs, and then he later resigned. And so Chris Victor is the head coach, and he's been talking a lot about Riley Grigsby. When I spoke to him today, he just said he's about to break out. Yeah, yeah, and, he, and he's off to a great start. I mean, look at his size. He's, he's, he's uh, really good size, almost had an NBA body. Um, here he goes attacking the basket. Wait and a good move in your feet. The cave's out. On for the first time for UNLV, Victor Iwako, the Oklahoma transfer who's been practicing. This will be his first action as a UNLV running Rebel. And that time they're going to get Grigsby on the push-off. Yeah, but, but Grigsby, you know, look at his size. He's got some really broad shoulders. Uh, and when a guy like that, when they get going from the outside, um, you know, they feel like they can just conquer the world. So now, you know, if he gets to attack in the basket and get to the free throw line, he can get in a real good rhythm. And we've seen this, this three-headed monster, you know, attack before. They have some really good scores, and you just don't want him to get off to a good start like they have so far. Four seconds on the shot clock. Bryce Hamilton, does he see it? Now with two, now with one. Long range jumper, no good. Nuga cleans it up for UNLV. Michael Nuga into the game. Here's Nuga again from three point range. Swish! Nuga, great offensive rebound. He's such a hustle player. I've, I've really enjoyed watching him play uh, so far this year. He attacks the basket really, really well. Um, so great job chasing down that offensive rebound, and then he gets rewarded with the three. Nuga comes off of a game in which he shot just one for six at San Francisco. And that shot is uh, deflected as UNLV's McCabe with the block, head of the circle, laying up is good for Bryce Hamilton. And that's what the Rebel need, Rebels need. They need those defensive plays, um, you know, so that they can get out and transition and score. This is a very fast tempo, and we expected this, and the running Rebels want to run with the Seattle Redhawks. We didn't know if UNLV would stay in and try to play a half-court game. Here's Nuga from three again. There he is. So off to a good start for Nuga. Um, great penetrate and pitch by McCabe. And the Rebels are now excited. They're, they're ready. And, and, and this is going to lead to, you know, better defense. You know, they're, they're ready. They're gearing up. Two three-point bombs for Michael Nuga. And the running Rebels tie this game up at eight. Victor Awaka. He'll never back down. So yesterday at practice, we saw Victor Iwaka for UNLV and the Oklahoma transfer. He just wanted to fight his teammates. He was happy to be back out there. And 
just plays a very physical brand of basketball and also he's very, very athletic as we see. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, uh, good teams don't just happen, you know. Uh, sometimes it takes some, some, some tough times. Um, and if you're able to stay together and work together, um, you can work through those tough times. And that's what we're hoping the Rebels are able to do, you know. I thought they got off to a really good start, you know, to the year. You know, I watched them uh, against Michigan especially. They played hard. They played together. They really represented uh, UNLV well. Um, and, yeah, they've, they've, had a, they've had a little slide here. Where, uh, they've had some troubles. But, um, but according to, you know, the coaching staff and talking to the coaches, you know, they've had a couple of really good practices. Uh, Coach Kruger is able to uh, take um, a little bit of the, the pressure off and keep their spirits high, you know, because kids can get down. These, these are still kids. They can get down. Um, but at the same time, still push them and hold them to a high level and to a high commitment level on the defensive end. And, um, you know, although Seattle's off to a good start, I think the Rebels are starting to pick it up, especially on the defensive end, to establish that, 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 that culture that needs to be in place for them to be effective. Eight unanswered for the UNLV running Rebels. The steal by Jordan McCabe earlier. A couple of buckets by Michael Nuga. And Nuga, for the most part, every time we see him, he's pretty much running downhill. But now he backs it out, takes a couple of triples, and buries those. Yeah, he, you know what? Uh, not, not to put too much pressure on him, but he kind of reminds me uh, of Russell Westbrook a little bit because he's got, like, one speed, you know? Like, he's just, he's just 0 to 100, boom, and he's at the basket, you know? Um, really talented player, and, it, and again, it's been, a, it's been fun watching him play this year uh, because of his athleticism, and, and it's good to see him get some shots going. Um, and you know he's going to bring it defensively. You know, you know he's got that effort there. We've got 15 on the timer. Reese Brown and Donovan Williams check in for UNLV. Kyrie Brown for Seattle for the Red Hawks. And now they're going to try to set up some offense. Good defense again by McCaig up, up top. Nothing coming easy for Darian Trammell. Timer down to three, down to two. Stutter step, the hesitation off glass, the wave off the basket, and a foul before the shot on Nuga. Boy, the Rebels come out to a slow start, but now they're tied up at eight, and I just could see maybe, we see this in practice, Donovan, where UNLV can shoot the ball. I keep telling everyone, I know they can shoot, and then they come into games, and, and this week, Kevin Kruger said a lot of that happens perhaps because the Rebels were timid on defense. They need to be more aggressive on defense. Speak yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it, everything starts with the defensive end. And, you know, as, as you can see, you know, we, we started off even rough tonight. But then on the defensive end, once you start getting those deflections, you start diving on the floor and getting loose balls, you know, you get excited. You start getting out and getting easy baskets. Now you're in a rhythm. Now, you know, um, you're moving the ball and you're getting better shots. Uh, than, than force, forcing shots, you know, from three. So that's what they need to continue to do. They need to continue to get after it defensively, push the ball, and try to get good, wide-open shots. Because contested threes, um, really, really, it, it, it just lowers your percentage. It's, it's very difficult to hit contested threes. And um, we're going to get a foul inside on Reese Brown as uh, they try to lob it over the top of the Rebels to Brandon Chatfield, and that'll be the first personal on Reese Brown and Nuga returns for UNLV. I just like uh, what the Rebels are doing, extending that defense now. And I think a lot of the success here, especially in transition, has come because Jordan McCabe is pressuring the ball. And McCabe almost comes up with a steal. Nothing's coming easy. A deep three on the way. That's no good. And that was taken by Riley Grigsby. And we have a rebounding foul underneath. Rebels yeah. playing well defensively. They tighten things up of late. Yeah, yeah. You know, you got to you got to be scrappy, and that that's what that was down low. Guys are pushing and, and trying to get position down there, and it's a good job by the Rebels. Uh, make sure that they don't get that offensive rebound. Of course, Victor Iwaka playing in his first game as he gets the touch up top, and now Nuga back up top to McCabe. Teams have settled down on each end defensively. Here's Williams and McCabe, and back to Nuga, and they're not going to give him any room to operate as Kyrie Brown is guarding him tightly. And that's Williams, chucks it up, banks it in. Man. Donovan Williams with the bucket, had 12 points at USF. He averages 10 points per game, and the Rebels with their first lead of the night. Because the bank is still open at 7-12. Well, it's um, Las Vegas. Of course, <laughs> everything's open. Great ball movement on that possession. A tough shot, but it went down. 
Kyrie Brown, ball stolen away. Here comes Jordan McCabe once again. Lob underneath. Owako can't bring it down. Underneath, here's Williams. He gets rejected underneath. The whistle and a foul. Kobe Williamson was there defensively. A little too much on that pass, but you love the effort down here on the defensive end by the Rebels. They're, they're, they're starting to lock in a little bit. You know, they're getting those deflections. They're diving on the floor. You know, those things are so important. Um, and then on the other end, you're getting really good opportunities on the offense. Owako's got to finish that right inside. Jordan McCabe, uh, assist to turnover ratio this season, 31 assists, nine turnovers coming into the game, one of the best in the nation. They're gonna get a moving screen on UNLV up top. You see Royce Ham coming back into the game for the running Rebels. He's out there with uh, Williams and we've got Again, in case you join us late, Bryce Hamilton averaging 16 points per game. He's back in the starting lineup for UNLV tonight. Kevin Kruger said that Hamilton played perhaps his most efficient game the last time out in that loss up at USF. 23 points, 9 out of 18 from the field. And outside the deep three, that's uh, Kobe Williamson. That doesn't appear to be in his range. Oh, Ooh. between the legs with the dribble, there's Nuga. And we've got a foul against Seattle. I think that's going to go against Williamson. Nuga dribbling down the middle, keeping his head up. Um, you know, a little behind the back pizzazz here. There we go, keeping his head up and, you know, gets the call. Draws the foul. Third team foul against Seattle. Hamilton on the elbow. Shake and bake move. And in the past, we might see him try to take that up. There's Williams. He's not scared. He takes it underneath. Ham is rejected underneath. And uh, we're going to get a whistle. Emeka Odeni just skied up there and blocked Royce Ham Jr. But now we're going to the free throw line. You know, I think that starts with Williams attacking the basket the way he did. You know, great move um, attacking the basket. And then, you know, Ham, he, he just wanted it. He wanted it more than everyone on that possession. Um, and great job offensive rebounding, and now he's going to get to the line. You got to make those frees. Boy Sam Jr., nine blocks so far this season, and he's also averaging nine points and ten boards per game, second in the conference in the rebounding category. Against SMU, six points, ten rebounds, and the only player to start every game this season, Royce Ham Jr. Yeah. Makes one out of two. Very talented uh, uh, player, has really good athleticism, um, has, a, has a wide range of skills as well. You know, he can come out, step out the floor, and do a lot of things. It, it seems like, you know, he's a forward, uh, but he's playing a lot underneath, uh, but he's got the skills to be a forward or to, or to play even on the wing sometimes. Seattle now has gone cold and almost about five minutes without a field goal. That one will not drop outside for Darian Trammell. Running Rebels again with a rebound, one and done. And this 11 to nothing run, and there's Hamilton for two. And, and you know, that started with Ham getting the rebound and busting out. Not a lot of big guys can do that, you know, and that speaks to his skill set, you know, and that, you know, he's a, he's a forward, you know, playing that position. He was able to bust out, leave his guy behind. Um, and set up Bryce for that shot. Rebels looked like they were in a matchup zone there. Underneath there's Grigsby, no room to operate. Good defense by Donovan Williams once again. Eight on the timer. Here's Grigsby again down the lane. He scoops it up and in. Now, Grigsby's just a man. That's just grown man stuff right he's there. He's got like a large base. <laughs> he's got like, he's got this Donovan sort sort of aura about him with that wide base. Yeah, that was just a grown man move. I mean, he uh, just attacking the basket, getting all kinds of contact, and is able to finish. Coleman, it rattles in. Marvin Coleman from deep in the corner. Averages two points per game coming in. He was 0 for 3 against USF. 0 for 2 from three-point range, but he finds his mark here early. Can't find a better kid than Marvin Coleman. Ultimate team guy. Um, it's good to see him get one down from three. Blocked by Nuga. And Hamilton playing that point forward position now. He'll kick it over to Williams. Rip Economo defending now. And that shot was altered by Economo, rebounded by Williamson. And here comes Seattle once again. 
And Economo drills a three. Uh, great transition offense. Great transition offense, pushing the ball, getting to your spots, and he was able to get a wide open shot from the corner. You don't want Rip Economo to get going at six triples in a game against Pacific Lutheran. And he's not one of that fabulous trio that they have. So that's the complimentary scoring that Seattle will try to get. We've got 11-15 to go here in the first half. And your score is UNLV 16 and Seattle, the Red Hawks 13. UNITY. You know another five letter word that means the same thing? to our community, um, you know, uh, so 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 it's good for the Rebels as well. I think it's a win-win. Hamilton around the curl, Baker from the corner, and we're going to we'll get a rebounding foul underneath, and Mr. Hustle was in the middle of that, Victor Owaka, who played for Lon Kruger. You know, uh, John Sandler, play-by-play -play guy for the running Rebels for a long time, was telling us about the one year with Lon Kruger. Lon Kruger was the head coach, and and UNLV was on the road for four games, <laughs> like stretching out all over. They'd go on the road the first year, first couple of years, I think, that they got the charter. Back in the day, we didn't have the charter, so we would be traveling. We'd be on the road for a good, you know, week. Oh, and the dunk by Ham as he finishes. Yeah, great attack, great finish. And that's this, that, that's this versatility of Ham, you know. Um, um, he, he, he can take guys off the bounce and finish strong in the basket, you know. So it's just a quick step, you know. 
Um, not ready, not ready to move your feet. Great attack, great finish. Speaking of not being ready, Darian Trammell just said, I'm getting out of the way. Man. I want no part of Royce Ham Jr. And you saw Iwako with the big defensive play for UNLV. Rebels defending very well, very well of late. Economo. And Rykovich up top. Here's Economo again, tries to go behind the back. Here's a steal. The steal by Jordan McCabe. Good high screen by Awako. Good opportunity to take that shot for McCabe. And a rebounding foul will be called underneath. That goes against Awako of UNLV. And Kevin Kruger is going to give Victor Awako some, some run. Absolutely. I mean, talking about great athlete, um, you know, hustle player. Um, um, you know, um, you know, we, we, we need that. And, and with trying to establish that culture of defense, trying to establish that culture of, of passion, he brings a lot of that um, to this ball club. When I talked to Chris Victor, he was saying that this is a team, Seattle, that likes to shoot early in the shot clock. Right on cue there. Off the miss by Cameron Tyson. And he said he, that they like to do that because the defense typically is not set. Entry pass underneath. There's Ham looking for an outlet. Off the double team, swivels, goes underneath, jump hook, short. But what he said is he likes uh, to have the team play, you know, early up tempo where they can shoot the ball. They have the freedom. If the defense isn't set, they're seven seconds into the shot clock. Yeah. And they'll take those shots and they'll chuck up threes because, hey, that's a time and a good opportunity. But the Rebels so far have defended those first 10 seconds well. Yes, yes. Other than the first couple of possessions and then uh, that one possession in transition, um, the Rebels have been able to get back and, 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 you know, put a body on, you know, whoever's back there and match up and, and um, you know, guard, guard their three-pointers uh, a little bit better, uh, you know, as we get going in this game. Mike Nuga comes back. Keyshawn Gilbert on for UNLV. Darian Trammell, the 5'10 sophomore, he entered the transfer portal after last season. He averaged 21 points per game and had a lot of attention from Oregon State, from USC and Georgia. The preseason Western Athletic Conference Player of the Year. But he liked where this program was headed. He said, I'm just going to stay exactly where I'm at. It's nice to get a lot of flowers from all of these uh, <laughs> other, <laughs> other schools. And he just decided to come back and said, hey, I just want to stay here. It's a great program. And here's McCabe for three. Off the mark. Ham with the offensive glass underneath. Triple teamed whistle. And we're going to get a reach in foul. Yeah, Tr Trammell's a very uh, talented guard. Um, you can see it. He's got really good footwork. He's got good floor vision. Um, you know, he's a smaller guard, but he, he likes to get in there and, and, and try to finish over the big guy, and he's shown that he can do that. Um, but he can also step out and hit the three, um, as well as set his teammates up on the offense. So really talented guard. Both teams are now in the bonus, both over the limit. Two personal fouls uh, for Denny, two for Grigsby, for Seattle. Wide open spot up look is on the way, and that is down by Cameron Tyson. And see, I think that was probably like a miscommunication uh, because there was nobody within 10 feet of him, you know. So um. here's Trammell off the steal, takes it from McCabe, goes up inside, whistle and a foul. We're going back to the free throw line. And this is what Seattle, you know, this is what they like to do. They like to run, you know, they like to push the ball. Um, like you said, they'll shoot early in the shot clock. Um, you know, there's a good reason to do that. If you have an open three, you know, and it's early in the shot clock and you shoot, can shoot at a good percentage, why not shoot it? Um, you know, so now they're starting to get a little bit uh, active on the defensive end and get those deflections. We, you know, the Rebels, we have to take care of the ball. we got to be more careful and understanding, um, you know, so we can get better shots and better offense. Trammell needs to work on his free throwing. Another miss. Darian Trammell, no high school scholarship offers, uh, no, no offers coming out of, of high school, despite being one of the top players, a two-time all-league player at St. Ignatius High School up there in San Francisco. That's very surprising, but... Uh, He's 5'10". I yeah. think, you know, that's got to be a factor, right? Yeah. Not yeah, tall yeah. enough. And, you know, it depends on where he played high school. depends on where, you know, um, um, he played AAU ball and, and the connections that were there. You know, what, what, was the, what was the visibility like at the program, you know, uh, where he went to high school. So, but it's, 
you know, if, if it speaks to never giving up. You know, if, if you're a guard or if you're if you're a high school player um, and you're not getting opportunity at, at your high school, um, you can go and walk on. You know, we've had many players with UNLV that would walk on and eventually get scholarships. Uh, but it just speaks to never giving up. And now look how well he's doing. Bryce Hamilton, who's three out of four from the floor, has six points, will go to the free throw line when we return. I think he was fouled behind the arc. So perhaps three shots coming up for Bryce Hamilton. Back with more as the Rebels lead by four. With 12 institutions nestled in the nation's most desirable destinations, you'll see us enjoying life at the peak of celebration. As you witness us not only win, but win the right way, you'll find us competing at the peak of integrity. As our more than 5,000 student athletes take the field of play with unequaled passion, you'll find us performing at the peak of competition. The Mountain West is at the peak. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> yeah, now give some good fortune and good luck to Bryce Hamilton, who's 0 for 2 here at the free throw line. And hopefully he makes the third. And he's 0 for 3, takes the hat trick. Bryce Hamilton, a preseason for the Mountain West uh, Conference team selection. I don't know if that uh, good guy will be He's got to make some good points. And that was deep. I mean, that was about NBA three. Uh, you know, and they switched it up to his own defense. Good pass. Man. And this finish. For David Malone. Looked like they were in a 2 3 defense. And, and, and when you're playing zone, you have to be you know, that more mindful of where your shooters are. You know, you need to call out where your shooters are. You need to point them out so that. You know, uh, the guards can know that they need to close out really, really strong. Um, That's right. Kovic, that floater in the lane, and that doesn't drop. Mwaka with the rip. Bastia Panja is in now from Leeds, England. Where's number one for Seattle? Oh, what a drive underneath, and the foul as Williams went to the bucket. Donovan Williams. Oh, my goodness. I mean, do you see my face right now? I mean, this kid is so athletic. One dribble. Two steps, and he is about to bring the house down. Uh, so great attack, you know. Um, he, he is absolutely one of my favorite players to see um, attacking the basket, and he's got a wide range of skills. Uh, but, man, he's got great athleticism. Um, and, you know, he's a young player, so when he starts to develop, you know, more around his game, he's going to be a really exciting player for the Rebels. And Stretch Williams makes good on the first free throw. UNLV, that's just their second make from the free throw line tonight. Two out of six. And Donovan Williams has had some poster dunks, and we saw him at the Thomas and Mack, and once he gets going, he can elevate, he can finish, and we're going to have a lane violation against UNLV. You know, we're in, and it, we're really struggling at the free throw line right now. Um, you know, I mean, we could we could have, uh, uh, you know, about a 10 point lead if we were able to make our free throws. So let's see if they can get going with their defense and, and 
stretch this lead out a little bit more. Rebels active defensively. And now up top, we see Kyrie Brown calling for a screen. Doesn't get one. On the way, that's Cameron Tyson. This time he's off the mark. Underneath cleaning up and laying it in was uh, Brandon Chatfield. Chatfield for two for Seattle. And it's down to a two-point game. So we approach six minutes remaining here. The high screen in Rome, Moaka. And then underneath, wow. Big foul on Donovan Williams against him. Donovan Williams, 12 points at USF, as we mentioned. Four-star. Had an 11-point game when he was uh, playing for Texas at the University of Oklahoma. I call that an audition game because, of course, we saw where, you know, uh, Lon Kruger was there and, you know, passed along the scouting report. This kid's pretty athletic. I want to ask you this, Donovan. Uh, how difficult do you think it is for these Rebels to fit into their new roles. A lot of them, uh, nine newcomers on the team, a lot of them come from different programs where they had other roles. So how difficult is that transition? And moreover, how long do you think that's gonna take for them to finally get into a rhythm here for UNLV? You know, I, I think it's gonna take them some time to develop that consistency, um, you know, because, you know, roles, you know, they, they're, they're uh, they're one way today, and then they, it might change in a few more games. Um, so I think it's just developing that consistency and that really togetherness. You know, these guys have to stay together. Um, you know, and they've had a, a couple of rough games. It's important that they work those things out in practice. Um, you know, they've had a couple of really good practices, and they need to stay together. And I think if they can just be consistent, um, they'll be able to turn this thing around. Here's Ham the other way with the slam dunk. Off the transition, off the block. And Royce Ham out on the breakout for UNLV. And we see Jordan McCabe back in the game for the running Rebels. McCabe now, he has the two personal fouls, so you want to be aggressive defensively, but you also have to be cautious at this stage of the game. Rebels now extending that lead to five. Three-pointer rattles out from deep by Ponja. Vasja Ponja. And the Rebels make it a one and done. Three point range. Here's Williams, three pointer on the way. That won't go down. And Rykovich with the rebound for Seattle. They tried to do the lob play underneath on the other end for Ponja. Deflected, taken away. Here's Nuga, drives to the basket, kick out three on the way, and that is McCabe. Swish! <laughs> you were really excited about that one, weren't you? <laughs> Did I take out a coffee? <laughs> um, you know, Three wide open uh, three pointers in a row, but the Rebels, great defense, pushing the ball, um, and, and uh, they're able to find Ham on that play. But then great attack, and look, at, look who's in the corner, wide open. And he'll make a good percentage of those. Um, that's going to be cash, and we're on to, to you know an eight point lead. 29 21, Rebels lead. Back with more in a minute. The running Rebels are shooting 46% from the field. Seattle, 35%. And Seattle from three-point range, five out of 15. UNLV, four out of 11. And the running Rebels up by eight. They trailed by eight early in this game. We've got an offensive foul. Riley Grigsby cannot believe that call. And that's Williams moving his feet. Great defense. You know, that's, that's, that's three fouls on him. So. You know, um, um, that's one of the, you know, he's, 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 he's trying to attack the basket and use his size against Williams, and, and, and he was able to move his feet and get in front of him and get the charge, Kyle. So great defense by Williams on that play. Yeah, Grigsby, Riley Grigsby, he'll have to take the bench here, and he's the leading scorer for Seattle with eight points so far. So they're going to miss his shooting. High screen, and then the curl by Bryce Hamilton has the ball knocked away. He's going to slide and dive and try to come up with the ball. And it goes out of bounds. And the Rebels maintain possession on a hustle play by Bryce Hamilton. Yep. 
I mean, it was it, good, good attack, but he got in a little bit of trouble there. You know, he had about three guys on him that collapsed on him, um, and one of them was able to poke the ball loose. But, you know, Bryce, he, never, he doesn't give up. You know, good hustle play after, after getting the ball tipped away there. So I think Royce Ham, uh, who already has nine rebounds, I think he wants the ball, and he's going to try to be more offensive in this possession. We've got man coverage. Branton Chatfield is guarding him. Get out of the lane, though. <laughs> High screen now set by Ham. Can't get back to Ham. Rebels with 10 on the shot clock. Here's Hamilton deep in the corner. They give it off. Here's Nuga. Can he make his third three? No. And the rebound by Chatfield underneath. But ultimately a good possession. Rebels moved the ball, got five or six shots, and got a good wide open three, and that's what you want. Near stale by Williams. It would have been off to the races. Layup attempt is no good by Rakovic. And underneath, tapped out once again to Jordan McCabe, the West Virginia transfer. Oh, now the fake outside. Nuga goes up, tries to reverse it. Shot blocked by Chatfield underneath. Back the other way, Darian Trammell kicking it out. On the way, Tyson. And that bends off the rim. Williams once again to Nuga, wide open court. Williams out in the corner. They look for the post up by Ham. Instead, Ham will give it up. And the steal now by Darian Trammell lays it up and in. He tried oh, to draw the yeah, foul so I'm there. I'm surprised he didn't get that bump call. Yeah, Michael um, Nuga was trailing. But great anticipation by Trammell on that, you know, able to get, you know, he's dribbling, trying to attack the basket. He was able to position himself in a way to knock it loose and go down for a wide open layup. Back down to a six-point game. We promised you this could be an entertaining one, and I think it will. I think it will live it up to the, uh, the pregame hype here, if you will. Hamilton, man coverage, timer down to three, and he drills the three. That's Hamilton, man. If he can get a rhythm, if he can get a rhythm going, it, it, it could be a lot of problems for Seattle. Um, you know, that was just a quick little square up, jab step, pull up three and he's able to get it to go. Not starting really sent a message from Kevin Kruger to Bryce Hamilton, fading away. Ponja connects for the bucket. And and Bryce is, I mean, he's locked in. He's a player that's locked in. You know, he, he's passionate about this game. He plays hard every game, um, you know, so it, it's good to see him um, back again in that starting lineup. Williams and off glass, doing well for the Rebels again. Under two minutes remaining. It's been a fun half to call. Each team has gone through some spurts here. Rebels at times have played very well defensively. This is a really good test for UNLV. Trammell off balance. And then a whistle and a call outside. And they're going to get a foul on Trammell. After the shot, what did he do? Yeah, they're going to charge Trammell with his second personal. Both teams way over the limit. Free throws are coming up when we return. Running Rebels lead by nine. And welcome back here from Mandalay Bay, the Michelob Ultra Arena, the home of the Las Vegas Aces, and for this weekend, the home of your running Rebels. Tonight, of course, this big game against Seattle and the Red Hawks, a team that's seven and two, and a very challenging game indeed. And then Saturday at 12 noon, Hartford comes in. University of Hartford will be playing against UNLV. That's a team that uh, just recorded its first win of the season. They're one and seven, but the Rebels still have to come out and play, and hopefully UNLV gets a couple of wins here this weekend. 
Absolutely, you know, for, for, for the Rebels, it's about establishing a base, you know, establishing who they are um, as a culture, as a team, um, establishing roles, and, and these two games are going to be great opportunities to do that. There's Hamilton, floater in the lane for two more. Bryce Hamilton now has 11 for UNLV on five out of six from the floor. The Kruger message resonated. <laughs> And, and that was just a great, that, that, you know, that play right there, that's just who he is. You know, he is great at attacking the basket, you know, going left and able to finish up over, over you know, he can finish over seven footers. You know, it doesn't matter. Uh, but he's so great at attacking the basket. Scramble, and uh, we've got, I think, a held baller. Are they calling a foul on Baker? Wow, I thought the Rebels did a good job in tying up Kobe Williamson. How much of a blow to the ego would it be if you are a starter and then all of a sudden your minutes are limited and you have to come off the bench? You know, it, 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 depends, on, you, it depends on how you take it. And he's obviously taking it well, um, you know, but that, that speaks to his, his, his maturity. It speaks to his resilience um, as a young man. Um, you know, you, you have to be resilient in this game because it's not always going to go for you. Things aren't always going to work out for you. Um, so I think it, I, I think it's a it's a positive to see um, him deal with that, deal with it well, and then you know come back and have two two great games for his team. We are not seeing a free throw clinic, but Kobe Williamson makes both the first two free throws made by Seattle. UNLV from the free throw line, Donovan just three out of nine, including Bryce Hamilton with the 0 for 0 for three in that uh, one possession. But uh, the Rebels will keep it right here. Uh, running Rebels, what do you look to accomplish here in the final 57 seconds? You know, just uh, continue to attack the basket like Ham is doing there. Um, you know, try to extend this lead as much as you can. Um, you know, we're up almost 10 points. You know, if we can get a good couple of possessions here uh, to send us off into halftime, uh, the Rebels will go in feeling really good about this game and a good, a good about their chances for, sec for the uh, second half of the game. On the road trip at SMU, I have never seen a team dunk on UNLV the way that we saw in that game. And then it continued against USF where teams are just dunking on the running Rebels. Now they don't have size inside. And of course, James Hampshire, the seven foot one inch transfer from Pacific has not been able to play. But nonetheless, UNLV undersized in some of those games. and. You, you're just not accustomed to seeing that. Hamilton dishes out deep. Webster three-point attempt, no good. And the rebound is cleaned up by Kobe Williamson. Williamson's given this Seattle team some good minutes. Yes, good good, good rebound, good hustle plays. Um, you know, he's got good size. Um, and it looks like Seattle's going to work some clock here. Um, about a three-second difference. About a three-second difference, yeah. yeah. Up top, Williamson lets it fly. Three-point uh. range, and he buries that shot. We were just talking about Kobe Williamson. Average six points, six rebounds a season ago from Melbourne, Australia. Final two seconds, and that shot's off the mark by Justin Webster of UNLV, and that brings us to halftime. What were some of your observations in that first half? Bryce Hamilton leads UNLV with 11 points on five out of six. Eight points for Riley Grigsby of Seattle on three out of six, but he also collected his third personal foul at the 424 mark. Yeah, I, I, I think it was just consistency on, on the defensive end. There were definitely some dips in defense there. I thought um, Seattle, they, they got way too many wide open three-point shots. Um, you know, they, they have such a great transition offense and they move the ball so well. Um, they were able to get some open shots there. Um, you know, Rebels, we got to do better with our free throws. Um, I'm talking because my free throws weren't so hot when I played at UNLV. What was your, what was your free wait, throw let's percentage? Not talk, let's not talk about that, okay? <laughs> but it's the holiday season. We'll give, you, we'll give you a little bit of a break. But they have to do much better with their free throws. Um, and, I mean, shoot, if they made some free throws, they'd be up 10, 12 points in this game. Is this about the tempo that we expected in this game? Absolutely, absolutely. And, you know, the Rebels, I mean, they have to they have to defend more consistently, and they have to, um, you know, uh, prevent them from getting wide open three point shots. Because if they start getting to get hot and start to hit some of those, you know, it, it could tighten things up for the Rebels. We saw it against USF where Jamari Bouye had those 30 points and the 11 threes that he made in that game, and 
the Rebels are defending a little bit better from three-point range. Uh, six out of 18, 33% for Seattle in that first half of play. Coach Kevin Kruger said that this is a team that takes to coaching well. He said it's an experienced group, and so can we see the residue and the results of a good week of practice, a good couple of practices for UNLV now carrying over to the court tonight? Yeah, we, we, we could, I think we could see it a little bit. I mean, um, I, I'm, I'm happy to see that the, 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 their, their spirits are up. They're excited about this game. They're excited about this opportunity. Um, they just need to continue to lock in, um, you know, and do their best on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, but you're seeing the effort, you're seeing the energy there. And, you know, I, I, I like I, I like to hear that Coach Kruger, you know, uh, that they had a couple of good practices and that they were able to keep things positive and that they were, you know, and that, that, that they're ready. They're ready for this game. They're ready for this challenge. And it's, the, it's about their journey. You know, this is their journey this year. And, you know, they're going to have some ups and downs. It's about staying together. You know, they need to stay together and work through those together as a unit. Um, and they're going to continue to develop and improve as, as we get deeper into the season. Back to the message that Kevin Kruger sent by benching, not benching, but not starting Bryce Hamilton. Uh, again, we are now seeing a more efficient Bryce Hamilton. And I think what Kevin Kruger is trying to do is he's trying to get Bryce Hamilton prepared for the next level. He wants him to be more of a complete player. He wants him to be more of a team player. And we've seen that in the last couple of games. And that's only going to be beneficial for this running Rebel team. Yes, yes. I mean, I've, I've, I've watched Bryce since his, uh, since his freshman year. I've always been excited about his, his, his skill set. Um, you know, and yes, you know, as he as he thinks about his aspirations to play uh, professionally, you know, it is about being more deficient, but more efficient, <laughs> efficient, um, you know, developing more with his skills um, so that he can play at the next level because he has he has that ability, you know. Um, so it's good to see him um, get off to a good start. Um, he'd, he'd be doing a lot better if he made a couple free throws, but, uh, but he's, not, you know, he's not too bad there as well. He's got the second half to, to turn that around as well and finish with a really uh, strong overall game. And Bryce Hamilton moving up the scoring ranks. He now moves into 22nd all-time as he surpasses Oscar Belfield tonight. And Bryce Hamilton was a player who averages four points per game as a freshman. And uh, before we go to a break, I wanted to ask you about your impression of Victor Iwako in that first half. You know, he's, he, I, I, I really like his athleticism. I like his tenacity. Um, you know, um, he had that opportunity on that lob there, but, but it kind of slipped through his fingers. But, um, but talking about, a, 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 I don't, I don't want to say a freak athlete, but he's got really good athleticism, really good feel for the game. Um, you know, I haven't seen much uh, just yet offensively, um, but, uh, but he's got good hands. He moves well. He's a good defender. He rebounds well. Um, so I think he's going to be a really good player for the Rebels. Running Rebels trailed by eight, eight to nothing early in this game, came back, and they went on that big run. And it was a run in which UNLV had uh, a 15, no, it was, uh, actually it was about an 11 to nothing run. And uh, they closed out the, uh, the half, but by giving up some points to Seattle, Seattle uh, scored the last five here. But the running Rebels uh, have played well in spurts. They've done a good job defensively in spurts, and they're looking to put together a consistent game in the second half, the next 20 minutes. Stay with us. We're at halftime, and it's UNLV leading Seattle 36-30. With 12 institutions nestled in the nation's most desirable destinations, you'll see us enjoying life at the peak of celebration. As you witness us not only win, but win the right way, you'll find us competing at the peak of integrity. As our more than 5,000 student athletes take the field of play with unequaled passion, you'll find us performing at the peak of competition. The Mountain West is at the peak.
Back at halftime, UNLV leading Seattle 36 to 30. Tony Cardasco and Donovan Stewart here from Mandalay Bay, where they are hosting the Running Rebels on the Strip at the Piccolo Culture Arena. And there is one jersey that hangs high from the rafters, number 25, right across their way up top. And that is the number that Becky Hammond wore. She played for uh, the team. Of course, we've got the Las Vegas Aces, but they were in Dallas previously. And now, of course, the assistant coach on the rise. And that's a great player. And it's always fun to come to this court. And it was fun to watch uh, the Aces here. And a really good run this, uh, this past uh, summer for the Las Vegas team. They had 10,000 fans in the game. They're a really good team. And, uh, a lot of fun to watch. Uh, very excited though, getting an opportunity to play. What stood out to you as uh, UNLV leads by six at halftime? What stood out to you on the statistical side of things? Uh, look at that block, that block by Ham, so athletic, right? I mean, by Hamilton right there. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's good, good to see the Rebels. I think, you know, they had some good bench scoring. You know, they had 17 points versus uh, Seattle's 15 points. 
Uh, points in the paint, I'd like to see that as well. They, they were at 16, uh, 10. Uh, I think it's, it's, it's going to be important that we, that we, you know, as Rebels, we, we maintain some consistency uh, because they did play in spurts on both the offensive and defensive end. Um, and, you know, the Tram Tramble, Tyson, Rigsby, they did, they did not shoot the ball that well, but you know they have that ability. You know they have that, that, you know, that ability to shoot to get hot um, and get hot really fast and put some points on the board. Um, so I think, you know, uh, the Rebels, they need to maintain their defensive principles and they need to be locked in. They need to have less open yeah, like, threes. I thought they were open threes. Like, yeah, you can do that. Like, with that, there's no right. Here we go! I'm going to play the ball on the floor and attack the ball. Because they really have to be in the second half. Will be ours! As soon as you make some noise right there! So, I think that's what the ball is going to do. They have to be Consistency on the defensive end, and you know, continue to they, they've done well not giving up too many offensive rebounds. You know, they're they're scrapping for the ball down there, uh, and I thought that was really good. But um, but you know, we got to limit those open threes, and we got to make them do things that they're not comfortable with. Seattle came into this game 12th in the country in three pointers. They have six out of 18 from the field in that first half. Michael Nuga is on the court to start the second half. He's been a spark plug in the game tonight. Nuga in the first half, six points, five rebounds, and five assists. <laughs> he is such a high energy, you know, uh, uh, player, um, such great athleticism, um, you know. So, yeah, he's, he's absolutely fun to watch, and, and he's off to a really good start. Six turnover for Seattle as they throw the ball out of bounds, and UNLV out rebounding Seattle 25 to 15. So that's a very encouraging sign. Hamilton up top, swing it on the right side. It goes over to Nuga. Nuga with that first half. You know, he's still coming back. He has, at times, perhaps he's feeling the effects of the ACL injury that he sustained last season at Kent State. You know, I, I, don't, I don't know. The, the way he's moving, I'm not seeing any effects of ACL. <laughs> and he finishes there. <laughs> and look, a great, another great drive. He's really good at attacking the basket and has good touch around the rim. Rebels look as though they're backing into a matchup zone and they're playing really tight defensively now. Ball's uh, knocked it about a foul against UNLV. And, and that's Ham just, just being physical. I mean, there wasn't a great deal of uh, contact there, but, you know, trying to stand his ground and be physical and gets the call against him. Trammell to trigger inbounds. One step towards the basket, and then Grigsby lost the ball on the way to the hole. And rebound is fought for again. There's a scramble. McCabe comes out of the pack with it. And here's Hamilton. Euro step two. And that's and that's his game. You know, you don't, you don't want to get him out in transition um, in any one-on-one -on -one or, or maybe even sometimes a one-on-two situation because he can attack the basket and finish with the best of them. There's Trammell and some bumping up top. That's going to go on McCabe. If that's the case, that will be his third personal. So... We told you at the outset, Kevin Kruger said that he wanted the team to be a little bit more aggressive defensively. He said that they need to take some swings, swing away, yes. be aggressive. And have they done that tonight? There's a three-pointer outside. Yes, yes. You know what? He, he wants them to be more consistent. He wants them to be more aggressive, and he wants them to take more risks. Um, and I think, I think we've seen that in spots. Um, you know, by, by the way that they are playing the passing lanes and, and, and fighting through screens. Um, you know, they just need to continue to do that and do that consistently. You don't want Cameron Tyson to start heating up. Tyson, he now has 12 points in the game, and he's four out of seven from behind the arc, and it's down to a four-point lead once again. And, and that's what they do, and it's all about them getting hot. If, if oh, they have nice the ability drive. to get hot, um, you know, that was a contested shot. That was actually solid defense, but he actually he made a tough shot on that play. And great, great drive by Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton continuing his hot hand as he now is a six for seven, has 13 in the game. Efficiency, efficiency. Here's Darian Trammell off the Rebel double team. Tries to lob it inside. The deflection by UNLV. Here's Hamilton, wants to race ahead of the pack, and he's fouled by Trammell. And so, on Trammell, that'll be uh, personal foul number two. So, so with so with that guard on guard screen, you know, um, um, that's Hamilton and and I forgot who the other player was, but really good job jamming Trammell up 
you know, making it difficult for him. You know, only being, you know, he's five foot ten. If you're able to get a big body on him, make it difficult to make that pass, and that's what they were able to do there. Rebels uh, hoping to start to get some separation from this very tough Seattle Redhawks team, a team that came in at seven and two, but they had a loss uh, coming in here against Vir uh, Virginia Military Institute. Ball is poked away, knocked out of bounds by Grigsby's playing with three personals. Yeah, Seattle's off to a great start. They've had a great year so far. Um, they played some, you know, they played a, they had a Pac-12 uh, opponent, I it think. It was Washington State that um, they lost to on the road. Right. So, um, so yeah, they're playing well, and they're off to a really good start. And a very promising um, uh, group of young men. Hamilton made that all happen for the new Nuga three. Nuga from deep, and Bryce Hamilton went behind the back. He was <laughs> double team tripled. He kicks it out, and Nuga connects again. And Michael Look, Nuga is having a night with 11 points. Listen, some, sometimes Bryce gets to dancing and roller skating, and, and he's a, that's what he did on that play. And, you know, and, and he attracts a lot of attention. So when the whole defense is collapsed, now you're able to kick it out to Nuga for a wide open three. Williamson with that set shot, and he missed, and a foul again. And let's see who they're going to get here. It's going to go against the Rebels. Who is that on? Cam? Yeah, it looks good. like Ham. If that's on Ham, that would be his uh, second personal. Double digit rebounding night again for Royce Ham Jr. Yeah. now with 10. Ham has been an absolute monster. Um, you Grigsby know. for three. No. They try to get the offensive board. It's picked up at the baseline. And they'll restart this possession. Almost a double dribble by Trammell. Good hands inside by McCabe. Kick it outside. Here's Grigsby. One on one against Bryce Hamilton. Went with the cross. Tries to spin. Throws up a running one hander that won't go down. And a foul underneath as bodies are hitting the floor. And good positioning underneath by the running Rebels, David Mwaka. Yeah. A, a solid drive by Grig Grigsby, but, you know, um, Rebels were able to stay in position, keep him in front, and, ma and make it a difficult shot. Um, you know, but, you know, Grigsby, it was, it was a really, it was a solid drive because he was able to use the space and try to find the seams and get close enough to the basket to get a good shot, but good defense by the Rebels. You know, out here at uh, practice this week and saw the run in Rebels, and, you know, it's an eye-opener to play at some of these arenas. Like, they played at T-Mobile earlier this season, uh, they were just looking around yesterday in awe. That shot rattles out, taken from deep in the corner by Baker. And the rebound comes out to Grigsby of Seattle. Running Rebels up by nine in this game. Whistle on the drive. Listen, it's it's the we're, 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 are, are we the basketball mecca now? I mean, it's it's fabulous Las Vegas. We have we have so many venues and so much opportunity here. Um, you know, I think for a long time now we've seen teams come here. Um, you know, whether it's Team USA for practice or, um, you know, different college tournaments that are happening. Um, it's, been, it's been great. It's, it's a wonderful place to live, and, and we have a lot of great venues here in Las Vegas, um, you know, where we can see some really good games. In the Western Athletic Conference, uh, Seattle, of course, the Red Hawks. Uh, Chicago State uh, is dropping out because of expenses, and they said, you know, it's hard to play with travel partners. And so they actually quit, I think, late last season. I don't think they played uh, their final games. And they are adding four new schools. Stephen F. Austin, Lamar, Sam Houston, and uh, we've got Abilene Christian. And then, and that'll be the starting effective this year. So the whack just gets wackier. <laughs> and, then, and then Southern Utah with head coach Todd Simon the former UNLV basketball coach. So they go in in 2022 in a very competitive conference. It's pretty deep. And, man, with the whack, though, some of those road trips, you would talk about yeah. road trips. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Those trips were outlandish, especially, like, at the time when we had to go to, to Tulsa and you play with travel partners and you play pairs. You play pairs of games all okay. the time, right? Yeah. No, I, you know what? I actually, th there was a time where we, in the 90s where we were in the WAC as well. Um, but, you know, I remember playing in the WAC. It was like we changed conferences, you know, in my four years at UNLV. It felt like we changed three times, but I think it was only two. 
Um, but, you know, they used to be in the Big West way back in the day, and then we were in the WAC, and then we were in the WAC in this region, and then we had to play in that region. So, yeah, it can be, it can be very wacky. We, um, you know. we played in more conferences than Michael Nuga has attended schools. <laughs> this is his fourth school, Eastern Florida Junior College, Portland State, Kent State, and now UNLV. Four years, four different schools. Wow. Oh, nice entry pass. And the inside bucket is good for Kobe Williamson. And Williamson, some great minutes off the bench, now has seven. Yeah, he can stretch the floor. And, and that time he was able to just get a, a, a good seal on a smaller defender, um, able to seal him off and get an easy layup. The running Rebels, Jordan McCabe, has four fouls officially. And so we see Marvin Coleman in. Nuga tries to go downhill. Bounce pass, try to leave it behind. Stolen away by Kyrie Brown. Here comes Seattle on the attack. Trammell, dribble penetration, tripped up by Nuga at the head of the circle. It's a game of runs, and UNLV currently scoreless in the last 207. Story here tonight, yep. Bryce Hamilton with 15, Mike Nuga with 11, no one else in double figures other than Rebounding tallies, Royce Ham Jr. with 10. Yeah, with, with a little bit of foul trouble, you know, um, they're, they're having a hard time. Uh, you know, they're subbing in a lot of, lot of players and, and having a hard time finding that consistent scoring other than uh, Mr. Hamilton and Nuga today. Trammell finds an opening on Williams, fires it up, and that's going to hit the side of the iron and the rebound down to Hamilton. Hamilton tries to find an opening, kicks it outside. Here's Williams outside for three, buries it. That's and, and you got you got to give credit to Hamilton, man. I mean, he is he is attacking the basket and drawing in the entire defense and kicking it out for threes, wide open threes. The drive and the kick, and then underneath uh, that was I think Kyrie Brown in traffic who laid it up and in. No, it was Williamson. Williamson, Williamson again. Good hustle. Williamson. Able to and finish. back the other way. There's another three pointer, Justin Webster from deep. That's what we like to see. You know, good driving pitch for, you know, that good closeout on the shot. It was contested, but he was able to knock it down. And for Webster, that was his first bucket of the night. Running Rebels with their largest advantage at 11. And we get a whistle in the key. And that'll be on Coleman, I think. Yeah, and there he is. One, two, three, four players wide. There's going to be at least one person open. You got four players collapsing on you. There's going to be at least one person open. So... Um, so great penetration and pitch to the you Rebels see, on both plays. You see Reese Brown call that a three already before the ball was even delivered to Donovan Williams. So it's good to see some synchronicity with this team. And over the back, that's Mwaka. Mwaka fronting the post, and he will foul Kobe Williamson. That's a tough one. You know, you got to watch the, the, the hand in the back on that. I, didn't, I, didn't, I wasn't able to get a good view of it, but he tried to reach over the top and deflect the ball. Um, but maybe had a hand on the on the back, and they they'll call that every time. You know, you really have to move your feet, try to get around him, or try to get on his hip, push him to the side, and then try to get that deflection. And so Williamson uh, from Melbourne, Australia, at the line, he misses there. As we said, it's not been a free throw clinic. Now two out of six from the free throw line for Seattle. Running Rebels three out of nine deep in the corner. That's an air ball uh, launched up deep in the corner by Webster. And we're going to get a foul, and that'll go against Seattle. Running Rebels already over the limit here in the second half. They just picked up their seventh team foul, three team fouls on Seattle. So that could be a factor as Hamilton drives. Oh. We're going to get a charge? Yeah. A charge on Price as... And, and Riley Grigsby stood his ground. And, and, and Seattle's just picking up the pace on defense on, on, on their part, on their end. Um, you know, that was a great defensive possession for them. They were able to keep guys in front, contest every shot, and then they're able to get that call there. On they're the scrappy. Yeah, and they play at Washington, their next big game, on December the 18th. And then December the 20th, they'll take on the preseason favorite in the WAC, New Mexico State, at home. And they're playing uh, some of their games. They play at the Red Hawk Court. Off the miss, Williams with the rebound. And they are playing eight games at the brand new, the old key arena at Climate oh. Pledge Arena, the home of the Seattle, Seattle. Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> and the old Supersonics, right? And the, 
Bring them back. I, yeah, Bring yes. them back and yes. get Vegas an NBA franchise. <laughs> Pronto. Here's Hamilton outside. Shot clock is down to eight. Nice pass underneath Mawaka. He had the drop step, and it was knocked out of bounds, so now just four on the shot clock for UNLV. Where do you go on the inbound? You know, I mean, there was, some, there, there was a key arena. I'm going to go back to that. There were some fun teams back then. Gary Payton, um, uh, Sean, Sean Kemp. Kemp. Oh, my gosh. You know, like one of my favorite dunks of where, all time. Where are they going to go? Sean Kemp where dunk. are they going to go here on the inbound? <laughs> Does it come into Williams? Lob pass. Mawaka can't handle it. He tries to tap it in the corner and knocks it out of bounds. So, again, Seattle. I think they drew up something there. Yeah, 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 they were trying to get him on the lob, but uh, good defense. That You know, they, they sensed that and was able to get – they got, got two bodies in front of them, uh, which made it very difficult. The season ended for Seattle last year, getting blown out against Grand Canyon. They want a piece of them again this year. And that goes Denny had the basketball. There's O'Denny. Up top, here's Trammell. Leans in the lane. His short-range jumper is no good. Tapped around and finally pulled down by Bryce Hamilton of the Running Rebels. Number five, his fifth board of the night. And good good tip by Coleman there. Uh, get him that ball. Uh-oh. Forgot the basketball, did Hamilton. And see, this is the these are the effects of not playing with Jordan McCabe to settle them down. They couldn't get the ball to Coleman. Inside, it's Kobe Williamson once again. He's got 11. And it's down to a nine-point game. Yeah, this, this is where you maybe run a nice little set play or, 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 or you know, get something, get one of your go-to sets um, to one of your go-to players. Brown's doing a good job on Coleman, just hawking him. And they couldn't get the ball to him. And now there's 10 seconds on the shot clock. A little bit disjointed for the running Rebels. Let's see if Bryce can take them out of this uh, funk there. Skip pass, Williams deep in the corner, timer expiring. And that shot's long. Mawaka cleans it up as he came weak side. And Hamilton on the drive gets fouled. So back to the free throw line for Bryce Hamilton. Um, you know, uh, well, some of my old coaches used to say the basketball gods, you know. And, and the basketball gods punish you when you give up offensive rebounds, you know. <laughs> and, and that's what happened there. A good defensive possession. Um, and in Seattle, they gave up that offensive rebound. And now you've got Bryce attacking the basket, um, you know. But they played, they played solid for, you know, um, you know, 29 seconds of that play uh, on the defensive end and, and just gave it up on the last minute. Here's a stat for you. I know you like stats. Donovan Stewart, UNLV and its opponents have each hit on the season 76 three-pointers. It's even. 76, and tonight, even again, 8 out of 23 from three-point range for Seattle and for the running Rebels, 8 out of 20. Okay. I want to get back to talking more about uh, the rodeo and the effects because I know that that's uh, something, the reason why we're here tonight and, and why we're playing here. And what's happening is uh, this was a co-op game production event uh, put on by BD Global Events and our good friends there and UNLV. And what they're trying to do is BD Global is just so savvy and they put on uh, that uh, big tournament that we saw with UNLV playing Michigan and Wichita State and Duke and Gonzaga. Yeah. They're setting things up for next year where we could have power fives coming in for this weekend. Okay. And uh, we could have some mid-majors playing this weekend too. But I just go back and you were talking about some of your memories about having to go on the road because of the rodeo in 98 and 99. Was that, were you around then? I you was, yeah, yes. Yeah. It, was, <laughs> it was a 25 day hiatus. I had to look it up. Yes. 25 days that the Rebels uh, did not play a yeah. home I, basketball you, you, game. You know, it, it felt like, you know, we, it's like we went away and then we didn't come back until conference play. <laughs> You know, that's really what it felt like. That's it felt, what it like, felt we, like we yeah. we we were away and we were gone and we were like in town and out of town, flying here, flying there, and then oh, it's conference time. Okay, so um, so yeah, that was that that was definitely a tough time and and you know like we talked about before, um, the rebels have to be grateful. I think our fans have to be grateful um, that we're closer. You know, we're we're right in our backyard at Mandalay Bay. We're right in our backyard at T-Mobile. Um, you know, so I, I think it's good for, for running Rebel basketball. And, and then, you know, this is an event town. So next year, you know, we can get excited about uh, bringing some of those Power 5 schools in 
um, and having those 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 fun competitions because it was exciting, you know, at T-Mobile to watch Michigan and Jawan Howard, you know, one of my one of my legends, one of my OGs that I loved watching <laughs> growing up. I thought I um, was your OG. <laughs> Hamilton one for two from the line in that series, and he's just one for four on the evening. The drive inside by Tyson kicks it back outside. Williamson, three-point range. He'll the iron it off. And it's Cameron Tyson off the long rebound and another board. Odeni with the rebound and outside. That rings out Oof. for Trammell. Man. Trammell can't buy a bucket. Yeah, he's been having a tough, tough, tough game. He's two out of ten. Um, you know, the size of the Rebel guards, I think, have been, have been problems for him. You know, uh, getting a shot off and, and even making passes at times. Um, so tough. Yeah, he's having a tough game, but, you know, there's no quit in that guy. You know, he's, he's going to keep going. He's going to go until the end, um, and the Rebels have to be prepared for that. Good switch by Seattle. Entry pass was knocked away as Josh Baker tried to feed it inside for Royce Ham Jr. And the steal by Seattle. They kick it outside. They try to go around the horn. It's tipped out of bounds. Again, nice deflection by Bryce Hamilton playing on both sides of the court. If he plays better defensively, it has to lead to more offensive opportunities. Yeah, yeah. I mean, collectively, you know, it's team defense. It's not just one person, but, you know, it's team defense. And he has been active on the defensive end. Um, he's, been, he's been a facilitator on the offensive end. And he's, shoot, and he's efficient, you know, off, offensively right now. Like, he is, he's being, again, one of his most efficient games um, has been tonight, I think. You know, he was five for six at halftime. I'm not sure where he's at right now, but, but he's doing a really good job out there. Seven out of eight for Bryce Hamilton uh, from the field tonight. UNLV in the second half, shooting 60% on six out of 10. That's good. That's what that's what we need. That's what we need. Uh, you know, when you combine that with with uh, you know gr solid, consistent, um, you know aggressive defense. Uh, oh, you Tyson know, on the reversal. You know, we've got a chance against anyone. It's an eight-point lead for UNLV. The Rebels have to continue to attack the basket as Keyshawn Gilbert is back on for the run in Rebels. There's Gilbert, the freshman. Hangs in the air, kicks it back. Nuga wide open for three, and that's the front of the iron. And the rebound pulled down by Seattle. Seattle trying to cut into the lead even more, down by eight. Under 10 to go. Nice spin move, but that won't fall. And that was taken by Odeni. Now a three-pointer on the way, no. 11th rebound for Royce Ham Jr. Ahead of the pack. Here's Bryce Hamilton. Slashes to the hole and connects. Man, they're, get, they're, they're getting up and down and after it, aren't they? You know, Love the uh, transition yeah, game by the running yeah. Rebels tonight. Lots of pushing the ball. Um, you know, really, really, you know, just good, good effort plays out there by both teams. 16 in the oh, game, right 18 door. in the game for Bryce Hamilton. Off that block shot. And here come the Rebels out of the pack. Here's uh, Gilbert and then Nuga, and he goes off glass as he throws up that running one. Hander, timeout, Seattle. I, I, I tell you what, Ham is back in the game, and, and, and I mean, that kid, he just makes things happen, man. He makes things happen. You know, great defensive possession after, you know, um, a lane to the basket. Um, and then, yeah, great back door, kind of got him sleeping, and there he is making up for it. Outlet pass, and on the other end, you know, we're getting some really good opportunities. There's Ham again. Yep, great block, great save. And then he's going to go high off the glass. Beautiful. And that is a tough play. What do you think of, uh, what do you make of Keyshawn Gilbert, just a freshman, and fitting in with all these guys? I saw a tweet by Keyshawn about two weeks ago. What? You guys went bowling without me? Like, <laughs> are they leaving the freshman behind? <laughs> but he's definitely starting to earn the respect of the upperclassmen. Then they're all mostly upperclassmen. Yeah, yeah. No, he's. I, I, I like the way he has been attacking the basket. Uh, you know, sim similar to Hamilton, you know, he, he's able to get in the lane and draw defenders in and then make those, those really good passes out. And, um, you know, and he's also been, you know, able, I don't know if he's got any finishes yet in, in the lane, but he's able to finish against bigger defenders. Um, so, yeah, he's been a nice, you know, uh, uh, addition, and it, it's been good to see him out there um, attacking the basket and making plays for his teammates. This is the 11th meeting between UNLV and the University of Seattle Redhawks, and I was like, I never remembered UNLV playing Seattle. 
11th meeting, but most of those meetings were in the 70s, and they haven't met since 1976. And this series dates back to even be before Coach Jerry Tarkanian to the John Bayer era <laughs> at UNLV. It's like, what took you guys so long <laughs> since the 70s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, I've, I, I've I had my platform shoes on. <laughs> now, granted, now, granted, and a little bit of an afro when I still Did had, you? yeah, when I still had some <laughs> hair going on up there. Rebels by 12, under nine to go. Tony Cardasco, Donovan Stewart. We get derailed every once in a while. Darian Trammell is going to work against the freshman, Keyshawn Gilbert. Gilbert played at Durango, then went to St. Louis to be around his dad for his senior year. That's an off-balance shot underneath by Grigsby, who can't find his mark tonight. Has eight points, but he has really simmered down since the early stages of this game. And, and there's Ham again with another rebound. I mean, is he like Dennis Rodman out here or what? I mean, just great effort by Ham. Almost a travel by Coleman. Nuga feeling it three-point range, and that's going to rim out. Underneath, a scramble for the ball. And the possession arrow is headed in the Rebels' direction, so they will keep it. And that's some good hustle. And coming out of the pile with the football, it's actually the basketball, but it's Keyshawn Gilbert. He just doesn't back away from anything. No, no. And he's, he's one of the better on-the-ball defenders who's just going to improve. Yeah, I was, I was going to say that. You know, he's, one of, he's got really long arms and good size, and, and you know, he's, he's causing some problems for the more experienced uh, uh, Trammell because he's had a hard time getting things going um, offensively, you know, whether it's setting his teammates up or, or hitting shots on his own. Good defense on the perimeter. Grigsby Ooh, uh, covering pass. up Baker. And the pass underneath and the finish by Ham. Nice dish by Baker. You know, I mean, it, it's contagious, man. When if, if, you know, getting to the lane, drawing in defenders, you know, becomes contagious. You know, so it starts with Hamilton, you know, um, getting in there and, and setting up his teammates. And now you've got Baker doing it. Um, you've got you've got other other guys chipping in. Um, so the Rebels are clicking offensively. Um, as far as like attacking the basket and, and finding their open teammates. Running Rebels now have opened up a 14 point lead. Down to three, down to two. Grigsby just throws it up, doesn't get iron, and that's going to be a shot clock violation. And Grigsby wanted a foul against UNLV, but he won't get the call. So we've got the under eight minute timeout, the media timeout, and your score it's UNLV 58, Seattle 44. We'll return with more to close this game out after this. Welcome back from Mandalay Bay in the Michelob Ultra Arena. Tony Cardasco and Donovan Stewart. And uh, tonight our technical assistant is uh, Brian Martindale. And William Warfield is our director for tonight's telecast. And UNLV still on fire in the second half. Nine out of 15, 60%. Three out of seven from behind the arc in the second half. And uh, they're just starting to fill it up, and they're feeling it. And again, the defense is really stepping up in this game. You know, the Seattle Redhawks team. So this past uh, year, of course, with COVID and everything, uh, Baylor, the number one team in the country, played in the Vegas bubble with no fans. And I called some of their games, but then there were also games. Again, it's Nuga with the finish. But I also uh, saw as part of 
you know, the Vegas bubble, they brought in the Seattle team. So I had a chance to see them in advance against Air Force. They played Air Force and Northridge, and they split those two games. But it was uh, a great experience with no fans in the building. And in fact, I just called the games play-by-play -play alone. And we're going to get a charge in the lane, and that will go against Brandon Chatfield. And so I call the games. I'm there by myself. And there's one play in the Baylor game. I forget. I think it was the Washington uh, game. And referee is, like, coming down the court, and he calls a foul. And I go, that's a makeup call. <laughs> referee stops on a dime, said, that's a reach, buddy. <laughs> he called me out. Nuga for three. Oh. And he drills it. And this is the Mike Nuga that we've heard so much about. 18 points in the game for Michael Nuga. Yeah, it, it's the Mike Nuga show right now. Great attack. Um, he gets the defensive play on the other end and now finishes with the three. Missed the last 10 games at Kent State due to that ACL injury. And the Rebels now have opened up a big lead of 19. And they're doing it with Michael Nuga. They're doing it defensively, and they're doing it by drilling now 65% of their shots in the second half. Yeah. And, you know, Kevin Kruger was telling us this week, Donovan, that the last two games, hey, the Rebels in the first half of play have shot like 51%. So they're starting to shoot the ball. Some people think I'm crazy in the community because I say I watch them in practice. Trust me, they can shoot, and then they come to games and they're not shooting. They're playing looser tonight. We're yes. going to get Ham with the and, offensive foul and, on the screen. And they're taking good shots. Like, you know, you got to take good shots. Contested shots are really, really difficult to make. Uh, they're taking good shots because there's such great penetration and the defense is collapsing, and they're, and they're an unselfish group, so they're making the extra pass, and guys are getting wide open shots, and they're making them. So um, that does really, really well for your confidence. Um, and, yes, they're being more consistent – um, you know, on the defensive end as well. So Rebels are looking good. Trammell's getting frustrated, and Keyshawn Gilbert is the reason why. He's just giving him fits on the perimeter. Rebels with the 19-point advantage. The bounce pass goes out to Trammell. He'll pull up with that jumper from 18, and that's good. He drills that, and Trammell now in the game with just six points. Yeah, good, good, nice He's, little pull-up jump shot. Good ball movement by Seattle on that play. And, um, you know, there's still time. Five minutes and 36 seconds. There's still time in this game if uh, Seattle, um, you know, can compete, get a few get a few steals, um, get a few easy baskets. They could be right back in this game. Nuga tries it from the corner, gets the, the bounce, and it rolls in. And the Nuga show continues. I mean, has he been dominating the last few minutes? I mean, he was one for six and three points at San Francisco, and he comes to life tonight. He's just feeling it. And I think part of the reason why he's been just so effective in this game is the fact that the Rebels are finally driving and kicking. Yes, yes, yes. Look, wide, wide open, wide open shot, um, you know, by Coleman. You know, good, good. He was able to, you know, get the pass to him off of penetration. Um, and that's been key to the Rebels. They're, they're, they're getting good shots on the offensive end right now. Um, wide open threes, uncontested threes. And, yeah, they're going to make a higher percentage. That's what they're shooting at practice. When you see them at practice, they're shooting uncontested threes. So, you know, when they have an opportunity to get those in a game, you know, it's going to go down. You're going to see some, some results. Grigsby and Trammell tonight, a combined six out of 24 from the field. Grigsby makes two free throws, and now he has 10 points in the game. But it's a big lead for the running Rebels, leading by 16. Here's Keyshawn Gilbert. Oh, finds a wide opening hole in the lane and scoops it in. That was just, that, that was just nasty. <laughs> what about the finger roll in that the was lane? Just <laughs> oh, man. Great play, great attack, and great finish. Man. Gilbert in the game now with his second basket on the night. Here's Riley Grigsby. Gives up the dribble. Williamson, who's played real well in the second half. Rakovic, who's been quiet tonight. And that ball, I think, went off the foot of Cameron Tyson. And I don't say that it did. Yeah. Tyson this came into the game fifth nationally in three points, three pointers, averaging seven per game. And uh, Tyson, in this game tonight, he's got four. So maybe in the final four plus, he'll he'll hit his average, but the Rebels open up their largest advantage of the night as they lead by 20. 
Yeah, yeah. Ty Tyson's been a solid player. I mean, he's been consistent throughout the game. He's hit, he's kind of keeping him, you know, um, uh, in the game. You know, I mean, we're we're kind of, rebels are starting to extend a little bit here, but uh, but yeah, he's a very very nice player. He's been able to keep it going uh, for Seattle uh, so far this game. Darian Trammell. His head coach, Chris Victor, says that he's a better leader this season and he's not averaging as uh, many points as he did a year ago. He averaged 21 and he's down to a 13-point-per-game uh, average. And in tonight's game, he has but six. But the head coach, Chris Victor, the interim head coach, he says uh, that uh, Victor uh, says that Trammell is a better distributor of the basketball and yeah, the tall Rebel guards are much taller. Trammell checks in at 5'10", if that. And then you've got, like, Keyshawn Gilbert guarding him at 6'4". Uh, Jordan McCabe was even taller. And McCabe played a really good game, but he got into foul problems here in the second half. And he's played just 19 minutes tonight and has the four personals. But three steals. He's got four assists and two turnovers. So he's still continuing with uh, one of the better uh, assist to turnover ratios for UNLV. Coleman on the drive draws the foul. And you see where Riley Grigsby is saying to Rip Economo, hey, we need a little rotation there. Help yeah. out defensively. Yeah, yeah. And that's just good, you know, great jab step. He thought the screen was coming. Um, and he didn't. He rejected the screen and went the other way and is able to get a really good drive to the basket. The 17 foul against Seattle as Coleman is at the line. Rings out. Just played five minutes against USF. We know the story about Marvin Coleman from Las Vegas's Foothill High School. Started as a walk-on. He's playing for his third head coach in four years at UNLV. Misses both free throws. It's going to be a lot of free throw practice for UNLV. Four out of 13 from the free throw line tonight for the running Rebels. Ooh. Imagine if they made their free throws, what the score would be. I mean, it's it's been it, they've they've had a rough time at the free throw line, but. You know, there's so much to be proud of, you know, in this game so far and, and you know, what they've been able to, how they've been able to come back and recover together as a team. Great, Great block. Malaka sends it back. Five on the shot clock. I don't think Trammell sees it. Now he pulls up and now he throws it out of bounds. Great defensive series. Possession for UNLV. What a job. They extended the defense. Yeah, great block. Grigsby great in the block. lane had it and, sent back. And Grig Grigsby, is, he's got those broad shoulders. People are just bouncing off of him. Um, but, you know, when, when, you're, when, you're, when you've got a wingspan <laughs> like that, you know, you're able to, and, and you don't get that contact, that body contact, and you're able to get some really good blocks. So great defense by the Rebels. Good defense on the secondary level for the running Rebels. They lead by 20. It's our final media timeout of the night. And the Rebels are on their way to victory number five. Stay with. You and I, T Y. Know another five letter word that means the same thing. Hey, yeah, Let's okay. Go. One, two, three, plus me. Monkeys in the barrel. Don't send no more cheese. Rub my bros and pearls. Hump like four, five feet from the road in there. Tribe looks so old, please, son, you wouldn't dare. Yeah, like the rat pack live when we does that. And it's tap, tap, swipe, cause the buzz back. And I'm flying, I'm a wipe. That's a must have. Baby, say that I'm a only type. You know we gon' try to holly smoke every single time. And if somebody try my brother, I think I'm a With 12 institutions nestled in the nation's most desirable destinations, you'll see us enjoying life at the peak of celebration. As you witness us not only win, but win the right way, you'll find us competing at the peak of integrity. As our more than 5,000 student athletes take the field of play with unequaled passion, you'll find us performing at the peak of competition. The Mountain West is at the peak. Running Rebels have the basketball, and they lead by 20. Welcome back, Tony Cardasco and Donovan Stewart. And here's uh, Keyshawn Gilbert reverses it. Nuga wanted to trigger, but he'll back it out. And now once again, it's Gilbert, and Nuga pulls up. That shot a little bit off balance. Good defense and closeout by Riley Grigsby of Seattle. 
Back the other way, Tyson with the push off. No whistle. They can't get back up top. Almost a double dribble by Economo. And back over to Trammell. And Economo three pointer. And that was spot on. Yeah. Yeah. He found the bottom of the well, and Gilbert didn't react very well. Yeah, you've got to call out your shooters on that one, and, and he was ready. He was cocked and loaded from the very beginning. So um, good shot, and, and, you know, Rebels got to do a better job closing out on that. Gilbert wants to score, wants to be offensive, draws the foul in the lane on the drive to the basket. That foul will go against Cameron Tyson, and on Tyson, that'll be his third personal. Grigsby has four, and four for the Rebels, Jordan McCabe. McCabe averaging four assists per game this season. And again, we talked about his assist to turnover ratio, one of the nation's leaders in that department. And sometimes, you know, turnovers aren't a bad thing, though, if you're playing in transition. Is there such a thing as a good turnover? I, I seem to think if you're playing up tempo, you know, sometimes it's okay to have turnovers. Don't play too <laughs> cautious, right? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, uh, Coach Kruger wants them to take risks. And, and, you know, on, on the defensive end, I think, um, you know, it is you, you want to have, especially as a point guard, especially as a primary ball handler, you want to have a good uh, assist to turnover ratio, um, you know, so, you know, because that ball is, is so very valuable, um, you know, so he's been doing a good job of that. You know, he's had some foul trouble this game, but uh, I would I would rather not have turnover. <laughs> Tony. Williamson backing down Ham and then he reverses it and puts it in for two. I like the game of Kobe Williamson, and he's played very well tonight, now with 13 points. The Rebels have missed 10 free throws in this game. Yeah. Just 5 out of 15, they came in shooting 74% as a team. The yeah, well, back. What, what Williamson has been very solid out there. You know, he's able to hit the three. Baker uh, drills it from three-point range. Uh, Williamson uses his body well, you know. Um, you, know and they, you know, he's not... He's not jumping over guys, so he's really able to use his body and, and you know, and get those uh, layups, you know, uh, under the basket and in the paint. I think, you know, Kobe Williamson, he's got that 70s look, man. Maybe Listen. The way back machine from when they, <laughs> they last met in 76. <laughs> Eight seconds on the shot clock. That shot's going to be short by Cameron Tyson. And the rebound comes out to the running Rebels and under two to go, and they're going to lock in. Their fifth victory of the season. Running Rebels uh, shot the ball well tonight, other than the free throw line. That little floater from the baseline is good by Josh Baker. Yeah. I want Baker to score 13 in the game so I could call it a Baker's dozen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's uh, he hit a nice little three-pointer and, and a good attack. And, and the runner, you don't see that a lot anymore. Little run. That was one of my favorite shots back in the day. Let's shoot that little runner, and he gets it to go. Oh, reverse pivot, turnaround jump hook by Grigsby. That doesn't fall. Gets it back on the return, and Royce Ham with his 14th rebound of the night. Yes, yes. I mean, his effort is just outstanding, man. He, he goes after every rebound. Um, Ham uh, feeling good after his 13th. Baker's he dozen. He earned that one. Baker's he dozen rebound, one. takes the three. <laughs> hey, he's made some this season. So why not? Williamson, oh, the ball wow. fake. He faked out Gilbert, then throws up an air ball. Final seconds of the slop. Tyson, and now deep, it was Kyrie Brown who hits the three-pointer. And we're going to get some substitutes here for the last 37 seconds. Rebels by 21. They open this game up in the second half. And they did it by shooting 65% from the field. And there were six out of 12 from three-point range. So yeah. they weren't all like bunnies, you know, and gimme shots underneath. Right, right, right. But but you, you have to you have to remember the quality of shots that they were able to Gilbert's get. Gilbert's gonna take this. No, he's gonna kick it around. Good passing tonight by the Rebels also. On the return to Gilbert driving Ooh. baseline, reverse layup two. Man, Gil Gilbert, yeah, he's going and one mixtape out there. But the cat, I mean, that's hard to do to catch the ball when you're in motion, throw it between your legs. He wanted that. And then throw it up over your shoulder. <laughs> Final seconds winding down. Running Rebels will go to five and five. Gilbert's going to just back it out. <laughs> Did you see how wide his eyes got as he looked at the basket for a potential breakaway? But that's going to wrap things up. Running Rebels victorious. They go now to five and five on the season. The University of Seattle Redhawks falling to seven and three. 
and for UNLV, a big night for Michael Nuga. This was his coming out party of sorts. Eight out of 13 from the field, and he had five out of nine from behind the three-point arc. Wound up with 21. There's Coach Kruger, victorious uh, for his fifth win, and a nice uh, bounce-back win for UNLV coming off of the road. Bryce Hamilton, eight out of nine from the field, and Hamilton, 18 points on the night. And then Roy Sam. Roy Sam, what else could you say? Seven points, and he's a monster on the glass. 14 rebounds uh, for UNLV, and nine in the game for Stretch Williams, Donovan Williams for UNLV. It was a big night, big night defensively. They turned things up. They listen to Coach Kruger. Yes, they're very coachable as far as being more aggressive defensively. And that, in uh, fact, led to 12 turnovers uh, from Seattle. They defended well. Uh, they also uh, wound up in the game with five block shots. So they altered shots. They were able to get out in the transition game. And it was a good night for UNLV. Yeah, yeah. It was... Uh you know, you, you, you want to try to build that foundation and, and, and build your group up, build your team up again. Um, and after a couple of losses and, and you know, feeling down and, and, you know, hearing these things, you know, um, you know going on with the Rebels, you're, you, you get a little worried. And, and looking at this game and looking at this team, I, you know, Seattle and, and how they've done so far, I was like, man, this, this is, uh, you know, the Rebels are expected to win, but this is going to be a tough team. You know, they've got talented players. They shoot the ball well. Um, you know, all it takes is for them to get a little bit hot, and um, and, and, and they could potentially, um, you know, and the Rebels get a little tight, and they could potentially, you know, end up in a close game. But proud of the Rebels for, for, for fighting in this one, fighting together, staying together, um, and good job with Coach Kruger getting them prepared. Um, it's good to hear that they had a couple of good practices and were able to, um, you know, get things going for their team. Some of the highlights from tonight's game, that big slam dunk, the ham slam. <laughs> <laughs> he went ham on that right he there. He did go sure. ham right there. <laughs> You've heard of uh, Royce the 5'9". This is Royce the 6'9". <laughs> Some of our older viewers probably don't know that reference, but that block by Bryce Hamilton keyed that breakout. Yes, Big yes. play. Again, and, defensively, and, they and, just stepped up. And I don't know how much credit Hamilton gets for his distribution, but you see him there time and time again getting in the lane. He's, very, he's a very unselfish kid getting in the lane. I think it really the offense uh, accelerating and, and then getting into a groove really started with him and his penetration um, and then getting um, Nuga open shots and getting his team other teammates open shots. That was the N1 mixtape move there between the <laughs> and that was yeah, Gilbert, of course. Whoop, right yeah, there. Right there. Almost stepped out of bounds. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does he so, finish it off, you know, uh, with, with a reverse dunk when he's a senior? Yeah. That's the big question there. Yeah. And the, the big three, the trio for Seattle, uh, we told you coming into the game, they averaged 45 points between them. And UNLV limited them to just 30 points combined. So that's a good defensive error, uh, effort by the Rebels, and you give them their points pretty much, and you pretty much shut down everyone else. They didn't see the X factor, Kobe Williamson, who had 13, but outside of that, I mean, uh, you didn't have very much from the supporting cast for Seattle. Yeah, so so yeah. I think that had to be uh, one of the factors for UNLV in the game plan. Yeah, and sometimes, I mean, that, that's good. That's good scout, scout scouting report, you know, like, you know, what did they talk about? How did they prepare um, for those players? You know, um, and, you know, they were able to handle and, and limit what Grigsby can do. And they were able to handle and limit uh, what Tramel could do. And, and those are that's that's three headed monster there when you add um, Tyson to that. Um, so Tyson was able to have a good game and, and to get things going a little bit. But because the Rebels were able to um, to maintain um, just a little bit of control on the other two, they were able to really space out this victory. Um, and now you have a 20-point win. So and You know what else I like? 24 assists on 30 baskets for UNLV. So that's uh, pretty big. It's, it's large, and they just played tonight. And what a stat line for Michael Nuga with the 21 points. He also had eight assists, and he had five rebounds in 30 minutes. And I have to also wonder, hopefully everything is okay. Might have tweaked his shoulder again, but Victor Iwaku, for UNLV, and we're hoping uh, that it was just, you know, coming back again, played the five minutes, played really hard, might have banged his shoulder. Hopefully 
just a little sore. Yeah. And for precautionary measures, they held him out in the second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's, uh, again, a very uh, talented player. We wanted to see him on the floor, but obviously you want him to be as healthy as possible. Um, you know, so it's unfortunate we weren't able to see him in the second half. Um, he could have definitely added more to this team. Um, you know, he showed a lot, I think, in the five minutes that he was out there, you know, doing a lot of things that didn't pop up on the t on the stat sheet. But um, you see the effort there. You see the athleticism, um, you know. So so we look forward to him, um, you know, getting in the game and, and, and helping the Rebels this season. We thank everyone for tuning in to tonight's game. The running Rebels on the Strip. We're back here on Saturday, 12 noon tip-off time. UNLV against the University of Hartford, a team that is just one in seven. But... Again, the Rebels have to take care of business. It's more about the running Rebels than it is their opponent. Yeah. And so I got to tell you, it's been a lot of fun uh, working with you tonight, D. Yeah, likewise, man. And, and uh, you know, I have fun doing this. And, and thanks, for, thanks again for inviting me. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's been fun to see this, to, to watch this team. Um, I'm happy that they were able to, to kind of come back and, and stay together. And, man, they really look like a team out there. They're sharing the ball. They're getting after it defensively. Um, so that's good spacing. What, that's, good yeah, spacing, good, too. Good spacing yeah. on the floor. On offense, that, good passing that, around the perimeter tonight. That's what we like to see as, as, as Rebel fans is, you know, sharing the ball, effort plays, you know, stuff like that. So, um, so it was good to see that. You know, good job, Coach Kruger and his, and his, and his staff uh, for getting these guys, um, you know, out of the dumps and, and, and focused on the, the future and focused on improving and, and developing their team. Um, as we get further and further into this season. So we'd like to thank everyone for tuning in tonight. Once again, we'll be back here on Saturday afternoon, the 12 o'clock tip-off. Running Rebel bench tonight was on fire, 40 points uh, for the UNLV bench. Uh, more than half of the points that they scored came from the UNLV bench. That's one of the uh, positives about having such a good deep bench for UNLV and having that depth. For Brian Martindale, our technical director for William Warfield, uh, for being the director and producer of tonight's game, and for Donovan Stewart, former running rebel. Hadn't seen you in two years, buddy. It's great to, <laughs> great to be back. We thank you all for tuning in. Once again, the final score from Mandalay Bay, it was UNLV 76, Seattle 56. I'm Tony Cardasco. Have a great night.